What's going on, guys? This is John here with the Fantasy Tap, and thank you again for joining in for another great episode of our round-by-round -round breakdown, getting through that half-point PPR draft. Now, we're getting into rounds 11 or 10 and 11 today, so it's getting pretty late. We're moving down pretty quickly. You're at that point where you should have a few secure running backs, a few secure receivers, maybe waited on your quarterback at this time. And if you checked out the last video, Mike let you know that this is when you guys are going to be grabbing your late round tight ends and your late round quarterbacks. Now, before we jump into the breakdowns of round 10 and 11, just want to remind you guys to get your shot at winning a signed Kyler Murray helmet. Uh, all you have to do is be a subscriber on YouTube. Um, and if you guys want a second chance to get into our listener league, uh, that is actually how you win the helmet. Uh, you just need to be a member of our discord, which will be linked down below. Um, and again, make sure to hit the like button on this video. Let us know that you're enjoying the content that we're putting out. Um, after we get through these round breakdowns, we're going to start hitting you guys with our sleepers, as well as players who avoid in drafts and a lot of other interesting conversations and topics that you guys are going to be wanting to go through uh, right before the start of the season. Uh, as of tonight, we started round uh, week two of the preseason. So we're getting really, really close and it's really exciting for all of us. Now, to start out the 10th round right now, we got Zach Moss currently running back 35. Um, and realistically, last season, we were expecting Zach Moss, uh, drafted by the uh, Buffalo Bills, to come in and be a stud goal line back and have some little bit of upside on the, on the two to three down rolls. Um, but we didn't really get it. He was banged up a lot throughout the season. And the rushing game outside of Josh Allen in Buffalo was just absolutely abysmal. Uh, he did average four and a half yards per carry last season and did live on red zone usage. 4% of his carries, which, which was just over 120 last year, 4% uh, of those carries ended up being touchdowns. Uh, and that's what really happens when your only usage was within the 30, uh, within the 20 yard line. 35% uh, of his carries came within the red zone and 4% of those ended up as touchdowns. So he's not someone that gets a lot of carries. Devin Singletary has been looking pretty good in the preseason. Uh, and then Buffalo went out and added Matt Burita to the backfield as another player that's just going to be eating into it. It's going to be a huge committee and Moss just really hasn't been putting enough work in uh, for you to feel comfortable with that pick the touchdowns could be there but you just don't want to have to rely on your running back to be getting touches he's not someone that you could be expecting to get a lot from and there's better guys that are going to be on this list within the same round uh, after him that you could be getting a much better return on uh, so he's a definitely avoid for me uh, avoid that entire backfield if you can uh, next up we got Rashad Bateman wide receiver 54 now, huge, huge hype around this guy, expected to be the future of the Baltimore Ravens receiving core, uh, the first pick in their draft after giving up uh, their offensive tackle. Now, he did just go through some core muscle surgery uh, right now, and it's expected to miss six to eight weeks, making his debut game possibly week six. Uh, wide receiver 54 means you're grabbing him late. We're in the 10th round at this point, but still – Grabbing someone on the Ravens who, on Lamar Jackson's wide receiver one season, only threw the ball 400 times. Um, 36 touchdowns was great, but 36 touchdowns last season was top 10. Um, Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback. He is, this isn't a knock on his passing ability, but the total volume there just doesn't lead to Rashad Bateman really having that true number one role this year. They did go out and sign Sammy Watkins in the offseason, um, coming over from the Kansas City Chiefs. And when he's healthy, he is someone that plays a really valuable role. Um, so the total volume for him just, there's not enough there. Uh, Rashad Bateman could be a great dynasty pickup, but if you're doing redraft right now, especially with the injury, you're just going to be wanting to stay away from him uh, completely. Uh, and then at t pick 10-3, we got Ryan Tannehill, quarterback 12. Uh, after coming off one of his better fantasy football seasons uh, and putting up a running back that put up 2,000 yards with Derrick Henry, uh, he was able to keep A.J. Brown, Johnny Smith, as well as uh, Corey Davis. Very fantasy relevant, all three of them finishing in, as top 24 in their positions. Uh, A.J. Brown finishing with a top 12 and currently expected to be a top seven to eight wide receiver this year. Um, and then they got gifted one of the best receivers in the league in Julio Jones. Now, Ryan Tannehill is someone who is 
consistent, mainly in the fact that the run game allows him to at least score uh, two touchdowns per game, uh, able to find himself as a top 10 quarterback, uh, eight out of the last six, eight out of his 16 games last season, and then cracking the top five in three of those weeks. He's got a very, very consistent floor. His upside is limited. He's not someone that's going to be passing the ball 600 times this season, putting up 40 touchdowns uh, plus, but he is going to be putting up 25, 26, almost 30 touchdowns this season, guaranteed. He's going to be looking to throw to A.J. Brown as well as Julio Jones uh, has the talent to just open up the field. And then with Derrick Henry there, you cannot just let those receivers run free. Uh, or you can't just commit completely to those receivers. You're going to have to worry about Derrick Henry there. And those receivers have the opportunity to run free. Uh, realistically, he doesn't have the quarterback three upside, but you're grabbing someone that almost is guaranteed to finish him up in top 12. Uh, and he's just a very, very safe pick, especially this late in the draft. But if you want to wait or go and grab your guy, Matt Stafford, quarterback 13 right now, uh, coming in on the opposite end of the spectrum, in my opinion, He's someone that's been extremely fantasy relevant over the past few years, coming off of one of the best seasons that we've seen out of a quarterback in 2019, starting off the year like Dak Prescott did. Uh, in, I'm sorry, Matt Stafford started 2019 off like Dak Prescott did in 2020. Uh, and Stafford has the potential of joining the LA Rams this year uh, to be a top eight to top five quarterback this year, generally purely off of his passing ability with the upgrades at the receivers, uh, getting both. Uh, Cooper Cup, as well as Robert Woods. Um, Tyler Higby is looking to have a great year. This quarterback does like to use his tight ends. Last year, TJ Hawkinson was able to get over 100 targets in just 15 games. Uh, Matt Stafford, realistically, is someone that you can expect to get 35, 40 touchdowns this year, or the entire experiment of Matt Stafford in LA is just not going to work out, um, and he could be terrible. Now, I don't think he's going to have the consistency factor. I think they're going to be living off of big games. The Rams defense is someone that can really stop an offense in their tracks completely, uh, able to stop the run game and the pass game. If, they, if the game flow just happens to go that way, they're not very consistent as well either, which is going to lead to a lot of games where Matthew Safford's not going to be having to throw the ball as much. They're going to be able to run the ball, kill clock, um, and just not be in a situation where he's going to have to throw for – three touchdowns but when those games do come he's going to be someone that's going to win your week because he's going to come off of those huge games with those extremely talented receivers um he could be a league winning late round quarterback and at quarterback 13 you're definitely getting the value especially even when you get those bad weeks you're still going to get 250 to 300 yards uh coming in at 10 that pick 10 5 henry ruggs currently wide receiver 55 this is another guy where i'm actually going to be telling you to just completely stay away from the Vegas Raiders completely receiving core uh, is abysmal. Now, Henry Ruggs could be extremely talented. We saw one year of him. He was fairly injured uh, throughout the season, only playing in 11 games. Um, but what we did see from him was he was ranked first in target separation. Um, and that's per uh, player profiler. And he was actually in fifth in yards per reception last season. Now those big plays could work out great if Derek Carr and him could get on some sort of uh, similar thought process. But what we're seeing with the Las Vegas Raiders was they brought in both John Brown, um, they brought in Willie Sneed, they brought in veteran players. Um, and for me, that means that they really don't trust Henry Ruggs. They don't expect him to be that draft pick that they spent the capital on. Now, he's not going to produce like that, and I'm not going to be taking the shot on him. There's, he's another guy that's going to be extremely boomer bust coming into this season, and with this value, you could be missing out on players that have a much better chance of being someone you want to keep on your roster past week two or three. Um, one of those guys is actually going to be Marvin Jones going as wide receiver 56 right below him. There's an opportunity for Marvin Jones, someone who's been seeing seven or more targets per game, five or more catches for the past seven seasons. Um, he's extremely efficient, and that's coming out of somewhere where we're talking about Matthew Stafford just a few picks ago. Uh, Marvin Jones is, could be an absolute baller, taking an extremely strong role in Jacksonville should DJ Chark not be the guy that Urban Meyer is expecting him to be. Uh, Marvin Jones does have a great 
amount of upside. Um, and with that veteran ability, you're going to be wanting to, that rookie quarterback uh, to be throwing it to him. Now, that offense does throw the ball about 600 times per season over the last two years, and that's with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. Um, so we may see a little bit of a decline in that if they decide to go a little bit more run heavy. But they have committed to Travis Etienne in the draft, which is an extremely talented pass catching back as well as possibly lining up as a receiver, uh, which makes me think that they are not going to be going towards that run heavy offense. They are going to continue to light up the field, uh, letting Trevor Lawrence just use that arm that he's expected to have. Uh, I think Marvin Jones is going to be an extremely sneaky flex play for a lot of people. Um, and if you're grabbing him in the 10th round, you're getting a really great value out of him. He's someone that could be seeing 85 to 120 targets, especially over a 17 game period if he ends up playing them all. Uh, in round 10, you are able to grab James Conner, running back 36, and coming into Arizona, he's expected to work either complementary to or right behind Chase Edmonds, and right away, you're, you're not getting the James Conner from the Steelers, uh, especially if he's healthy. Now, what you are getting is an Arizona backfield that's losing 242 carries that Kenny and Drake happily carried last year now chase edmonds he's obviously an nfl back he's obviously talented he he has a role he is not going to be a bell cow back that is going to be able to harry a th handle a three down role uh and able to be efficient in both the pass catching and the running game james connor is someone that's going to complement that and they're both going to be seeing a committee role and you're grabbing him as running back 36 right now you're getting a value. He's someone that could definitely come into your roster as someone, if you've decided to go weak at the running back up to this point, he, you could get a couple weeks out of him. And if he does take over that full workload from Chase Edmonds this year, you could end up with a running back too as in the 10th round. Um, Chase Edmonds is not going to be that goal line back, which means James Conner is more than likely going to be getting a majority of the touchdowns uh, if the Cardinals decide to let the running backs take a bigger role in the running game and let Kyler Murray just use that arm that he does have. Uh, over in the next pick, we do have Melvin Gordon, another running back who's been falling a lot down the draft board. Uh, and this is coming off the fact that the Broncos did decide to go and pick up Javonta Williams, who is another fast catching back, uh, another great pure running back, a guy that can play a little bit of both roles very, very well. Uh, and at this point in his career, Melvin Gordon might not be able to fend him off very long as a starting running back. Uh, for most of camp so far, though, Melvin Gordon has been that primary back, running in a majority of the shares uh, in the first team offense. So you can expect him to continue to have a very strong role there. And last season, he was able to finish his running back 15 uh, in that exact same offense with Drew Locke at quarterback, with Brett Ripien, uh, with a wide receiver at quarterback. Melvin Gordon, at least this late in your draft, is going to be able to get you through the first couple weeks. Uh, I personally really think one of the best plays is if you grab Melvin Gordon uh, this late in the draft, and then you end up grab if you grab Saquon Barkley early, or another player who you were expecting to flex in the first couple weeks or might be able to miss the first couple weeks. Uh, uh, Michael Thomas, you might be able to get uh, 10, 15 points a week out of Melvin Gordon until Michael Thomas comes in healthy, and then you're able to flex Michael Thomas in, in the same role, uh, picking up two players extremely late. Um, there's some strategy to be built around it, and players like this um, could help fix your team until the waivers are active and you're able to pick up someone else that can fill that role for the few weeks. Um, towards the end of the season, I do see Melvin Gordon losing that primary role, but I do think Javante Williams is someone that at least falls back uh, until at the first quarter or half of the season. Uh, coming up next is Tony Pollard. Me and Mike have briefed this a little bit this offseason, but personally, I am staying away from guys that are considered handcuff running backs. Now, Ezekiel Elliott last year was not very efficient, and he was still the number one running back the all season. Uh, Tony Pollard does get his work in there, but it's never enough to where you want to play him and your running back slot, especially as a running back 38 when we're talking about guys that could take big leaps forward this year and be a quote-unquote sleeper in the 10th round uh, compared to someone that only has their value uh, at this point 
if their guy goes down and even if Ezekiel Elliott goes down, you're not expect you can't guarantee the same production from him. Uh, Pollard is someone that has proven that he can handle that role when he does have it, but you don't want to have to rely on that when there's other options available. Um, I'm staying away from Pollard absolutely and completely. Uh, coming up next, we got Trey Lance, quarterback 14, the rookie going to San Francisco, and he's going pretty high. Uh, at this point, you're seeing people pick up that second quarterback um, who they see upside in, uh, assuming that the person that picks up Trey Lance is someone that picked up a Patrick Mahomes, a Kyler Murray, a Josh Allen, um, and, you know, just want to see that, hey, maybe Trey Lance is the next the next guy. Um, personally, for me, I, I think that you do not need to be picking up this guy. He's not a great late-round quarterback. He's not someone that you can expect to even take over a role at any point this year. Um, through the off the preseason so far, um, the 49ers haven't played their second game yet. But as well as Trey Lance played in the first game, it is Garoppolo's job to lose. Um, though Garoppolo has been semi-injury prone throughout his 49ers career, you're not going to count against him. It's going to be completely when he makes mistakes and Lance just shows enough. Lance will be there next year as their quarterback one throughout this season. And there is a possibility he takes over a strong role before we even see them finish the regular season. But you're not going to be wanting to grab this guy because if you grab Murray, if you grab Allen, if you grab Mahomes, and they go down for those weeks, you can't rely on the guy that's not even going to be playing. You're going to be streaming quarterbacks. And just a few picks before, you had two quarterbacks that could be giving you quarterback one numbers um, on a week here, week there basis on a good matchup that would be filling a role a lot better than this guy. Um, at pick 11, you've got Robert Tunyon, um, another one that I'm not super hot on. At tight end 11, you're not, you know, you're shooting in the dark anyways. Tight ends are hit or miss at this point, but you want to take someone that could have a lot better upside. Last season, he had 11 touchdowns, which is absolutely amazing. Tight ends live on touchdowns, and that couldn't be any more true for him. Last season, he those 11 touchdowns accounted for more than 40% of his total fantasy points in a half-point PPR league. This guy got 60 targets last season. He was getting the ball pretty consistently with Aaron Rodgers there, but Aaron Rodgers is not going to be throwing 45 touchdowns on a 16-game pace again. This season, you can expect him to be throwing for maybe 40 touchdowns on the high end on a very good season again. It, it, and you're not going to be wanting Robert Tunyon to be sitting there giving you two to six points when he doesn't get that ball in the end zone, once another receiver finds themselves available, when Amari Rodgers takes a bigger role. Uh, if – anything were to happen if they start rushing the ball in the red zone more with A.J. Dillon being more involved in that offense. Now, there's just so many reasons that Robert Tunyon could not reproduce that season that I don't want to be taking a shot on him. There's other guys, again, that you just have much more value on. And that's what you're going to be getting, especially in these 10th, 11th rounds, is value here and value there. If, it's, if they're not good here, there's better value way later on. Um, another guy you're going to be see better value later on is going to be Rondale Moore. Uh, he's another rookie player who's going to be taking over a huge role in the offense they were drafted to. But best case scenario this year, he takes over for Christian Kirk. Uh, last year, he showed out periodically for two weeks here, two weeks there. Um, but it's not like they completely lost um, all of the targets that Larry Fitzgerald had last season AJ Green joined that offense uh, was targeted over 100 times last season did not look amazing with the rookie Joe Burrow but with this new offense with DeAndre Hopkins there um, DeAndre Hopkins actually giving his his nod of of consideration to AJ Green uh, and saying that Rondale Moore has done nothing to impress him and that was after the first week of camp uh, haven't heard anything since then but I'm not going to be taking the shot on Rondale Moore again there's there's other receivers at this point that are have a better opportunity to have a bigger share of the offense that they're going to be a part of. Um, but Rondale Moore, again, dynasty, definitely grab. Redraft leagues, stay away from him. You're not going to be getting the value. And if he does take the shot, there's a chance that he's going to be on the waivers for you to pick him up. Definitely don't reach on him. 
Uh, another running back for you guys, though, Leonard Fournette, running back 39. That means you're getting him super late. Uh, obviously, everyone's looking at how everyone played last season, weeks 1 through 16 during the fantasy season. Um, and Leonard Fournette did not look amazing. Uh, he was averaging 3.5 yards per attempt. He wasn't getting in the red zone, only getting six touchdowns on the entire season. It, it's not great. But if you look at the end of the season, Leonard Fournette turned off to playoff in Lombardi Lenny. The guy was going for 4.8 yards per game, getting 80 rushing yards per game, and averaging a touchdown per game. Automatically right there, that is someone that's going to be filling a running back two position very comfortably. The problem being, though, Ronald Jones is still there. Giovanni Bernard is still there but you're going to be able to get some sort of value out of him. Um, there's a possibility that Ronald Jones isn't able to keep up with Leonard Fournette. Um, he wasn't able to in the, in the Super Bowl or the playoffs. Uh, this late, he's someone that you're going to want to keep your eye on. You don't take the shot on him. You don't reach for him. He's not a my guy. He's not going to be a league winner. But he could possibly take over a strong enough role to be able to fill out a flex position. Um, again, Shots later. Uh, another shot that I'm actually kind of excited for, um, and this is a, one of those upside plays, and that's going to be Gabe Davis, wide receiver 58, one of Mike's favorite dynasty grabs last season. Um, he's, and I'm personally really excited to watch him again this year. He showed a lot of flashes last year, a lot of those coming off of weeks where John Brown was not in that offense. I um, mean, he's a big play receiver. He really started out showing out. Um, especially with Josh Allen at quarterback. Um, you got someone that could possibly throw the ball 80, 90 yards if he really could sling it, uh, but you don't need him to do that. Uh, with the addition of Emmanuel Sanders, though, Gabe Davis's total ceiling is capped. Uh, when John Brown left the team, Gabe Davis shot up draft boards uh, in dynasty leagues as well as redraft, but he still has an opportunity there. Emmanuel Sanders is not – a spring chicken he's not going out there young getting better every week uh he's a role filler he's there he was signed as someone in my opinion as someone that's going to be swapping in and out with davis uh filling in for cole beasley swapping in and without we're we're going to be seeing gabe davis get shots and if he doesn't prove himself uh to be at the point where they need him to be then Sanders will get more work, but I would definitely take the shot on Davis and see him be that number two receiver there in Buffalo with Stefan Diggs, who was getting 140 targets in 16 games last week, last season. It was insane. Uh, you could grab a, a top 24, top 30 receiver uh, in the 11th round, um, and that's going to be great for your teams. Someone that's actually going right behind Gabe Davis right now is actually Traquan Smith. Uh, even with the lack of Michael Thomas in that offense. Traquan Smith, someone you're probably not going to be wanting to spend a lot of draft capital on next season. Uh, he did not really produce anything last year when Michael Thomas was out. Obviously, Emmanuel Sanders was in that offense as well. And there were weeks where we saw uh, Taysom Hill as well as Jameis Winston getting a couple throws in that week. I uh, don't really think that Traquan Smith is going to be that savior for you. He has not produced more than two 10 point or more fantasy weeks uh, in the past two seasons that he's been around, meaning that with even that opportunity, he was not able to give you any sort of value. Right now, Marco S. Callaway and Deontay Harris are being talked about as being very involved in that wide receiver grouping. Traquan, not so much. Uh, don't grab him. Do avoid him at any cost. Next up, though, I'm very excited to tell you that Gus Edwards is going at running back 40. Now, J.K. Dobbins obviously is going to be taking over that number one running back role and is going to be getting a lot of pass catching work. But, you know, Gus Edwards is going to be used in the team that runs the ball more than any other team in the NFL. Now, Gus Edwards and the 11th round means you're going to be taking someone who is in a um, sort of a lesser Kareem Hunt role. I would say he has his own role in that offense, not saying that he's a pass catching back, but saying that he's someone that has his own value regardless of if J.K. Dobbins is there or if J.K. Dobbins gets hurt or is missing time due to whatever reason. Gus Edwards will find some weekly floor, uh, meaning that you're not going to want to play him on those four weeks, 
But if you're in a good matchup or we see that Gus Edwards is getting a 50-50 share in the carries as well as getting that red zone work that I'm projecting him to get, uh, not predominantly and not all of it, but I do think that he's going to be getting more of that red zone work, especially in the third and fourth quarters. Um, I, I do think he is a decent value and could be a running back to pick up if J.K. Dobbins does go down. Uh, coming in in the 11-5, Trevor Lawrence, another one of those rookie quarterbacks, but this guy is projected and realistically is going to be starting week one this season. Now, he was projected to be the best, most fantasy, or I'm sorry, most NFL-ready quarterback coming into the NFL since Andrew Luck. And if that is halfway true, he's going to have some fantasy relevance. Uh, Andrew Luck came into the league, and obviously we had top five se- two top five seasons in his first three seasons, uh, and as well as being project- uh, on pace to be a top five quarterback on his second season as well. Now, Trevor Lawrence is going to be coming into to a team that has been absolutely abysmal, but has thrown the ball 600 times per season over the last two years. Again, with Gardner Minshew at quarterback, new offensive coach or head coach in Urban Meyer. Now, what can we expect from the Jaguars besides uh, a little bit of who knows what? Uh, We don't even know if DJ Chark is going to be that team's number one true wide receiver or if it's going to be a mix of Marvin Jones, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, getting Robinson and ETN involved. Um, Obviously, Tebow's not going to be involved in that team anymore, thank God. Uh, So there's some reason to believe that Trevor Lawrence could be a semi-solid quarterback, especially in a two-quarterback league. Uh, I would like the upside on him. If you were someone that grabbed a quarterback early and you're thinking about grabbing Trey Lance in a redraft league right now, pick up Trevor Lawrence instead. Uh, The possibility is that Urban Meyer just puts the ball in his hands, let the three receivers that are very talented uh, pull a roll, as well as having two pass catching backs, Trevor Lawrence could finish as a sneaky low end wider seat or quarterback one this year. And grabbing him at quarterback 15 means that you should have taken someone else. Do not take him as your only quarterback or your starting quarterback for week one, because we do not know what is going to come of him. But from what we've seen in college and the upside that it could, he could bring, you're going to want to take the shot as a bench quarterback or a hold him and see what happens. Uh, someone else on the board, though, Latavius Murray, running back 41. Obviously, he's backing up Alvin Kamara, and he's a running back I'd stay away from. Even though you're taking him at running back 41, you're grabbing him this late, the true upside for him isn't really there. Uh, Even if we do see Alvin Kamara go down, Latavius Murray, when Kamara didn't play or Kamara left the game early, uh, took over a strong snap percentage, but still was not running the ball efficiently, uh, only going for three and a half yards per carry. Uh, Now, he did get a little bit of red zone carries last season, but those were weeks when we saw Alvin Kamara getting six touchdowns in a game. Uh, Obviously not expecting that more. He is a vulture and this late you're going to want to be taking people shots on people that have more upside and if you're looking to grab a running back that's giving you a low a a comfortable floor there are other guys at this position that you could be taking uh coming up next we got mike gesicki one of our homer picks um he's a very solid late round tight end pickup with upside the dolphins did spend an extreme amount of draft capital as well as money in free agency on receiving targets to prove that Tua is their man. Uh, but Kasiki is expected to be someone that's going to be seeing a very strong percentage of those targets. Now the dolphins do have four, uh, three other tight ends right now. Um, but they do, they pretty much found gold in drafting Gasicki a few years ago. Uh, and he's really shown to take a step forward over the last two seasons, uh, going over for, for over 500 yards and 60 catches in those last few years and only getting better last year. Um, he does pass the eye test. We did just go to the Dolphins training camp, and he was someone that, honestly, he was the second most explosive player uh, on the field. Now, looking great, made two one-handed snags, one of them spinning uh, around Falcons defenders, and he looked great. Um, and him and Tua seem to have a very solid connection, uh, even though – the other Dolphins receivers were not at practice. Um, Jalen Waddle was there. Uh, Jakeem Grant was there. But Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, and Preston Williams were not. So 
who knows what the true red zone opportunities are going to be, but the amount that Gesicki was getting targeted um, made me feel comfortable grabbing him, especially as a late round tight end, uh, where you're only looking for a few upside games. Uh, coming in at 11-8, we got Jalen Rager, wide receiver 60. First round pick for the Eagles last year. Absolute bust. Didn't really do much. I'm not sure if it's the Deshaun Jackson curse um, once he left the Eagles. Um, he's young enough to have a possibly amazing upside. He was drafted early enough, over enough talent to where you could expect good things from him. Um, only played in 11 games last season, but the Eagles did go out and draft Devonta Smith, Heisman Trophy winner, and he's believed to be the Eagles' number one wide receiver on week one. Um, preseason week two just happened tonight, and both of them didn't look amazing. Uh, both of them had a 50% catch percentage. Jalen Rager, even worse. Um, not able to bring the ball in. One bad pass. Did not have Jalen Hurt playing with him. But he's someone that's been balling out in practice, has been looking extremely well, making a, a handful of really Instagram-worthy catches. But we're not seeing the separation in games. We're not seeing him able um, to make me feel comfortable enough to recommend you guys draft him. He is someone that could surprise you. So I'm going to tell you that now, but I personally cannot tell you guys. Spend the draft pick on Jalen Rager when there's other people around him as well. Uh, at 11-9, we've got Kenyon Drake. And I'm just going to say this very, very quickly. Last year, he had a great season uh, per end-of-year numbers. But if you were someone that held him last year, you're definitely not someone that's going to draft him again this year. Uh, especially when he goes to a team to fill up a backup role for a running back that is much, much, much better than him. Uh, he's extremely inefficient, inefficient, and he was even worse in his time in Arizona um, and looking to play second fiddle for Josh Jacobs. Uh, he is a running back that could be seeing a little bit of a pass catching role, but not even getting a strong enough pass catching role in his time uh, in Arizona, letting Chase Edmonds take a majority of that. Um, he's barely able to stay fantasy relevant, even though he had games where he broke for 90 yard touchdowns. And those were the only games you wanted to play him. Uh, Drake was going to be hurting fantasy owners this year by busting week in and week out, just like he did last year. Um, and even though you're taking someone that had 242 carries last year, he'll be lucky to see 110. Um, do not expect him to be someone that's going to be saving your roster. Um, and, if you see someone drafting him, even in the 12th round, um, I'd be sending him trade offers for some, some low ball offers just because there's a chance they don't know what they're doing. Uh, if you take someone else that has a lot of value and someone that's going to be an absolute baller for you, Adam Troutman. Uh, if gesicki has gone, great pickup right here. Um, going to be more than likely the number two target on the Saints next season uh, should Deontay Harris or... Uh, Antonio Callaway, not, or I'm sorry, Marquez Callaway, not work out to the same degree. Uh, Troutman's going to be a third year tight end coming in. No Jared Cook this year. Last season showing extreme flashes. Uh, even when we had Jer uh, Taysom Hill coming in at quarterback, barely throwing the ball, Troutman was able to finish as a top 12 receiver or tight end once. Um, and not even the number one tight end on his team. Uh, with the lack of receiving options and the receiving talent around him, Troutman should be able to get in that 100-target range uh, if they decide to move the ball through the air a lot again. Now, especially with Michael Thomas out, he has been shooting up draft boards. There are a lot of people that know about him. But I have absolutely been in a couple drafts where I picked him up and I actually had someone ask me, who is Adam Troutman? So don't – he's not someone I want to reach for. Um, but if you end up waiting for a tight end and you just have not grabbed someone, he's someone I would expect to have a lot of upside towards the end of the season uh, or throughout this season towards the end of the draft and could make for a great tight end one on a team where you're willing to stream week in, week out uh, if that quarterback situation in New Orleans gets a little sketchy. Now, someone I would not recommend drafting is going to be Nelson Aguilar joining the New England Patriots this season. Uh, and not looking to be in a situation where he's going to be able to put up fantasy numbers on a consistent basis. Now, regardless of whichever quarterback's going to be there, New England has so much receiving options there in an offense that's not going to be throwing the ball as much as the next team. And Nelson Aguilar's not even the number one receiver on that team. 
he's paid the most. So that's an argument you could make. Uh, but I would argue that Hunter Henry and, and Johnny Smith are both players that are going to be seeing a strong workload. Nikhil Harry has found himself on the roster still, luckily. And Jacoby Myers has made strides, especially in the preseason. I, I just see a situation where all of the receivers on this team are so inconsistent that if you roster any of them and expect them to back, play for you, the week you line them up is the week that they're going to hurt you and not play at all. And I'm just not taking the shot on any one of the receiving core out of New England. Uh, it might change if we're confirmed Mac Jones to start a week one. Just, But that would be Jacoby Myers for me at this point. I do think that he's the most talented receiver there. Uh, and then finally, to finish up this list, we've got Emmanuel Sanders. Another guy, I'm just going to tell you guys straight up, avoid him. Do not pick him up. He's joining Buffalo, and it's right alongside Stefan Diggs. But Emmanuel Sanders next to Michael Thomas, another receiver that was highly targeted, did not even perform halfway as well as what you could expect from him. Drafted as finishing as the wide receiver 45 last year when Michael Thomas missed half the season, not even able. And Michael Thomas didn't even score a touchdown on the year. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders was given an immense amount of opportunity and just was not able to finish. Buffalo is not the Saints as far as the receiving core goes. You do not just have Michael Thomas. You've got Stefan Diggs, who, you know, takes away about as much targets as Michael Thomas could. Uh, but you also have someone I like a lot more, Gabe Davis, Corey, Cole Beasley, you've got there. Um, there's just not going to be enough work for Emmanuel Sanders to be consistent enough again. And the upside there is extremely limited. At best, he'll have a few wide receiver two weeks. If he, for some reason, is able to get in the end zone twice on the limited amount of targets that he gets uh, on a single week, he might have a high you know, wide receiver one week, but you're never going to be able to guess that even with Josh Allen balling out. Emmanuel Sanders is an absolutely do not draft, do not waste your time. I would rather take a shot on rookie receivers that are unknown factors than grab Emmanuel Sanders at this point. Uh, so make sure you guys check out our next episode that's going to be coming out where we give you more players to just avoid. Uh, me and Mike will both be jumping on that one for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this round 10 and 11 breakdown. It was really interesting. There's a lot of, we're getting to that point in the draft where these players upside so limited, you just straight up do not want to be touching them. And yet there's play, still players here who have an opportunity to finish in the top 24 at their position, top 12 at their position in the tight end category. And even some of these quarterbacks could have some immense weeks that could finish, find you a lot of, lot of value. Uh, we're getting into that sleeper territory and wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys on here help you guys win your season. Uh, I am really hot on that Marvin Jones pickup, but make sure you guys stay tuned for our next episodes that are going to be coming out. Uh, be subscribed on YouTube to get a shot to win a, a roster spot in our listener league where you can win a signed Kyler Murray helmet. Um, and then if you guys want another spot in there, join the discord link that'll be linked down below, which is a great community for you guys to find uh, fantasy football news, people to just meet and talk fantasy football with, as well as find some leagues, rate your rosters, um, sports betting, pretty much whatever you guys want to talk about. Just a bunch of nice guys that are there so far. Uh, join in and get that second chance in the raffle to get the roster spot in the listener league. Thank you so much for joining me again in another great episode, and I'll make sure to check you guys out next time. Thank you.